This week, we are taking a look at a taboo regarding funerals in Korea. I've already discussed about funeral culture in Korea in detail in one of my early episodes. If you missed it, I recommend you to check it out to enjoy today's stories better. The link's in the description and at the corner of the screen. But just to give you a basic picture, funerals in modern Korea are usually a three-day affair. The family of the deceased would set up a shrine either at the funeral home or their family home, and guests would visit and pay respect till the burial or cremation on the last day. According to some traditional superstition, funerals are believed to attract spirits, not just the spirit of the dead, but also other wandering souls. And for that reason, visiting a funeral poses a certain risk. To start with, if the deceased has died with lots of regrets and baggage, the spirit of the dead might try to attach to one of the visitors as the last-ditch attempt to hang around. Or the random spirits that have gathered around the occasion might do the same too. This belief created several customs and taboos. Visitors to a funeral are, for example, encouraged to make a stop on their way back home from the funeral. Ideally, a place is like a church or a temple or a crowded place like a bar to either deter or distract the spirit that might have attached to you. Otherwise, you might be bringing a spirit straight back to your home. In exactly the same vein of idea, you're supposed to take a little cleansing ritual too upon returning from a funeral by sprinkling sea salt over yourself before going back in your place. A spirit left hanging around you by ignoring such tactics is most likely result in various misfortunes about you or even a full-blown possession. For the same reason, if you have recently visited a funeral, it is considered a taboo to visit other celebratory events like a wedding or a birthday party. In case a spirit had followed you from the funeral, it would likely to get jealous of the festivity of the living and cause a havoc to the celebration. Could all this superstition be true? I can't argue either for or against it, but I can tell the custom used to be pretty widespread. Even my parents, both university educated, would sprinkle salt after visiting a funeral. And I can still find quite a few stories corresponding to the superstition off the internet, most likely written by people from much younger generation than my parents. So, here are six allegedly true stories from Korea about people who brushed with spirits from a funeral. As always, handpicked, translated and narrated by your host, Anthony. A week ago, my dad attended the funeral of one of his friends. The deceased was his close friend, so he stayed around to help with things and came back home late. My mom would later say the moment she saw him entering the house, she felt chills with a sense of strong aversion. That was the beginning of the trouble. My mom is naturally healthy and has been hardly ever brushed by seasonal cold or other usual ailments, but she got suddenly unwell. At first, it looked like a flu with fatigue and fever. She just took some painkillers and intended to sleep it off. But by the evening, I noticed she was going to toilet more frequently than usual. She complained about her digestion, that she had a combination of stomach ache, heartburn and bloody stool. And by the night, I heard Dad knocking on the bathroom door, calling out for Mom. Apparently, she got in there a long time ago and would not reply. In the end, we had to use a spare key to open the bathroom door to find Mom almost unconscious. While Dad carried her out to the emergency, I had a glimpse of the toilet bowl. It was all red with blood. Doctors ran several tests but could not find anything wrong. They just recommended to keep her under watch in the hospital a while. 
She stayed there for three weeks and doctors still could not diagnose what was the issue. In the end, we took her back home on her insistence. My grandma, upon hearing the news, then called in a shaman she was acquainted with. I really dislike superstitions and usually told grandma that she shouldn't waste her money and time on such a things. But probably for that reason, she brought in the shaman without telling us beforehand. The shaman looked just as old as grandma and surprisingly mild-mannered. She walked in my mom's room, took one look at mom lying on bed, and declared she was taken by a spirit that had followed my dad back from the funeral. She said mom was taken by a particularly nasty spirit which would very well kill her. She sent everyone out of the room and performed a sort of a ritual. She also ordered grandma to prepare some fresh rice and scattered it at the corners of the house. I still couldn't understand what the fuss was all about and thought I'd kill the shaman if something went wrong with mom. But then, mom's face turned healthier pink as soon as the shaman left. Her temperature that had been erratic for the past days stabilized and she could now even get up by herself to get a glass of water. Both I and Dad could just watch it with wonder. Mom herself seemed surprised and said she just felt lighter suddenly. I never really gave it a much thought to paranormal stuffs, but having witnessed what happened to Mom, from the sudden illness that doctors failed to diagnose to just as sudden recovery after the shaman's visit, I feel confused. One day when I was a uni student, a strange old woman stopped me on the street and told me, You have a such weak tea. Avoid attending funerals or such, and if you must, then at least cleanse yourself with sea salt afterwards. I felt a bit spooked, but didn't think much of it. I had no occasion to visit a funeral in the near future anyway, or so I thought. But shortly before the summer vacation, a relative on my mom's side passed away and I had to attend the funeral. By then I totally forgot what the old woman told me. After the funeral, I came back to my dorm room. And that night, I had the worst sleep paralysis. The room was shared by three, and I was sleeping on the upper bunk of the bunk bed. And all night long I had to helplessly watch a woman in black hanbok dress crawling around on the floor on all fours. I was scared to death if the woman wouldn't climb up to my bunk, but fortunately didn't. In the morning, the roomie who slept on the bottom bunk grabbed me by the shoulder and asked, What have you brought back with you? You are the only one who were away. The other roomie who slept across the room chimed in. What? Wasn't it you who wandered around the room all night long? You disturbed my sleep the whole time. Apparently, the first roomie saw exactly what I saw a woman in black crawling around, and the other heard the noise. The poor Rumi who had witnessed the ghost in closer distance shivered all night long under her duvet, wondering what it was and how it came here, and remembered that I had been to a funeral. We all three ran to the canteen still in our pajamas to ask for some salt, we sprinkled it all over each other and all around our room too. To our relief, nothing further strange occurred afterwards. But I learned my lesson and now follow the old wife's wisdom should I visit any funeral, that I make several stops on the way back home and sprinkle myself with salt before stepping inside home.
A story my friend told me. His great-grandmother, his mom's grandma, passed away. The whole family went to attend a funeral. He and his sister, both then yet adolescents, came back home first and his parents and an uncle followed later in the day. The adults seemed to open a bottle and my friend didn't give much thought. Until he heard his mom starting to cry so mournfully. Both he and his sister came out to see what was going on. Their mom was crying in a strange husky voice and was saying, Young, young, my child, I'm scared to go, I'm scared to go. Nobody knew whom she was calling as there was nobody by the name of Yong. Dad and uncle were alarmed and tried to shake her up, but suddenly she stood up saying that she had to go back to the funeral. But she collapsed barely past the whole way. She stopped breathing altogether a while and even afterwards roughly gasped for air. They ended up calling for an ambulance and she was taken to a hospital. When his mom woke up, she seemed fine. She still insisted to go to the funeral again. The funeral home happened to be not far from the hospital, so they all went back to the funeral. Both my friend's mom and her mom were Christians, and when they entered the funeral home, there was a clergyman invited in to pray for the dead. Suddenly my friend's mom flipped and jumped on him, grabbing him by the collar, shouting and swearing to piss off. Everybody was baffled. The clergy was none other than the minister from her own church, and now she was treating him like an arch enemy. When the clergy ran away, mom flipped back again and asked my friend, Why are you all still here? You should go to school tomorrow morning as if nothing had happened. Both my friend and his sister cried, so scared to see their mother behaving weirdly. Indeed, she seemed not remembering anything. Only later, after digging around a bit, they found out the late great-grandmother had a son out of the wedlock whom nobody in the family had known till then. And his name was Yong guess the spirit of the great-grandmother attached herself to my friend's mother and called out for the son she had to abandon long time ago. Back in 1994, I was six. An aunt to my mom passed away. She was so distant a relative that they hardly knew each other, but my parents were still obliged to attend the funeral. They wanted to find a sitter for me, but as I kept throwing a tantrum, they had to take me with them. I had no idea what the occasion was, so I was just happy to see my grandma there and tried to carefreely play with her as usual but something hit the back of my head so hard that I think I saw a star. It was my dad. He looked at me so angrily in a way that I had never seen from him. I was so stunned that I could not even cry. Shut up! Keep your mouth shut! He screamed. All the others were stunned to see his outburst. But before anybody could react, he kneeled in front of the shrine to the deceased and started bewailing. I don't think he had met the deceased more than twice in his life, and now he was crying as if he had lost his most beloved. That wasn't the end. He suddenly jumped up and grabbed mom, shouting, We need to get some flour, a bunch of baby's breath. Uncle stepped in to stop him from dragging mom out. After a back and forth, dad seemed to calm down a bit. He excused himself to the toilet. But soon we were alarmed by the screams of women. When we rushed to the toilet, 
we found that in the ladies. Despite women there shouting at him, he wouldn't budge. When he finally responded, it was in a strange female voice. No, I'm not going anywhere. An uncle tried to drag him out, but Dad jumped back and strangled him. At least three or four other guys tried to subdue Dad, but they could hardly keep him down. My grandma, who'd been watching it all, asked to bring a piece of hemp fabric. It's the fabric used for funeral dress, so easy to get hold of at the funeral. She burnt it, mixed its ash in the water, and made Dad to drink it down. Only then he relaxed and stopped fighting back. What am I doing here? What happened? Dad asked. Clearly, he didn't remember that he bashed my head, bewailed, and struggled in the ladies' room. We could not stay there any more and excused ourselves. But on the way, Dad, who was driving, suddenly shouted, "I can't see! I'm gone blind!" I remember how I grabbed on the safety belt, so scared of the whole situation. Fortunately, with Mom's guide, he could safely pull the car to the roadside. Mom called an ambulance for Dad, but apparently doctors could not find anything wrong with Dad's eyes. It took some time, but Dad's sight came back gradually. But he seemed to have lost the memory of the day altogether. While Mom and I were totally traumatized about the day, he still behaves odd occasionally ever since, like going into a temper fit, swearing in the manner that he usually never does, or gobble down dishes made with pig liver and intestines that he used to hate for its smell, or buying a big bouquet of baby's breath flower. Both the pig intestine dish and baby's breath were the late aunt's favorite. I hear. Is her spirit still hanging around him? But why he? My dad likes to visit Buddhist temple deep in the mountains. He is a Buddhist, but visiting temples is more like a day trip to scenic places for him. When I was little, I was sent to spend a few days at the relatives, and Dad drove down to pick me up again. On our way back along the countryside road, I saw a little sign that there was a small temple nearby. Knowing my dad's love of visiting temples, I suggested that we should visit it. Well, my secret plan was actually to delay the journey so that I could nag him to dine out before arriving home. But to my surprise, he sternly said we should just go home. I'm usually tactful enough to just say okay when Dad seems moody, but I don't know what was up with me that day. Perhaps I didn't want to let go of the idea for a nice barbecue dine out, but I threw quite a temper tantrum. So much so, he in the end turned around and took the narrow road up to the temple. The little temple was closer to a chapel, quiet and beautiful. Both Dad and I calmly enjoyed looking around, as if the little argument earlier was a distant memory. But we could not find anybody there, until I turned to look back at Dad behind. A monk. Was right behind Dad, staring intensely at him. I was too surprised to say him a greeting, but before I could say anything, the monk told me, "There's a dog under the jujube tree over there. Why don't you go over and play with her? She has puppies too." And while I was away, the monk talked to Dad, as Dad later recounted to me. Are we disturbing anything? If so, we'd set off our way," Dad said, clearly picking up the monk's weird stare. "Have you visited a funeral recently?" the monk said. "Uh, yes," 
How did you know that? There are two female spirits hanging on your back, and they seem to be eyeing on your child now. I believe you didn't follow the cleansing ritual after the funeral. Those spirits are not particularly evil, but be more careful in the future. When Dad visited the funeral of a relative, there was also the funeral of two young women taking place in the same funeral home. Their spirits were unwilling to move on and stuck themselves to Dad. Failing to take over Dad, they were instead eyeing on little me, an easier target. The monk performed a little cleansing ritual for Dad. Dad believes the reason he initially didn't feel like visiting the temple could be because the spirit sensed ahead what could happen at the temple. And the reason I was so persistent could be also I instinctively sensed it was for the best for both of us. Though, I still think I just wanted a barbecue dinner so much. In 2009, I found a job in Seoul and found a new room near the work. Rent was expensive and I had to get a roommate introduced by a friend. I called him Yongjun for the sake of the story. We got along alright without any major trouble into third month. One evening I grabbed some burger for dinner after the day's work and strangely thought of my uncle. It was odd because I wasn't close to him at all and didn't even see him often either. And when I just finished my meal, I got a message from mom that the uncle passed away. He was a trailer operator and his vehicle fell down to a pit at the construction site. It was a freak accident. I got goosebumps that I had just thought of him out of blue as if it was some sort of a foreboding. Fortunately, I was already wearing black suit that day and could head straight to the funeral home without needing to change. The moment I walked into the funeral home, I felt my head spinning. My mom and aunt, wife of the uncle, were there already with their eyes swollen with crying. I paid my respect to uncle and felt headache getting worse. But it wasn't an occasion to think about myself. I started helping other relatives to serve visitors to the funeral, but the headache got worse and worse. I do suffer occasional migraine, but it wasn't like anything I had suffered before. Soon my neck muscles stiffened up and my right shoulder got so painful that I could hardly lift it. I didn't want to show it, but people noticed I wasn't well, and both aunt and mom told me that I'd better go and take a rest. Before I get on a taxi back home, I got a call from my roommate Yongjun's number. But it was somebody else on the line. Apparently he drank till he knocked himself out and his colleague was calling me to ask for the home address. They were somehow on the way back, so I said I was going to pick him up. Heavy headache and painful neck and shoulder persisted when my taxi arrived where Yongjun and his colleague were waiting. Yongjun had indeed almost passed out. I wasn't in the condition to carry him, so just lightly tapped on his cheek. When he opened his eyes, the drunken, hazy eyes suddenly widened. Then he pushed down my belly with thumbs of his both hands. I thought he was so drunk that he didn't know what he was doing and tried to drag him to the taxi. But Yongjun waved my attempt away and this time pushed my neck with thumbs. Oh, stop it and get on the effing taxi. I'm not well either. I shouted at him, but Yongjun only smirked and kept pushing on my neck. Then he told me to wait and ran to a convenient store nearby. He seemed to be buying something there, got out and said, I'm sorry, let's go now. I really didn't have any energy left to deal with it, 
so I just got on the taxi with him and back home. But Yongjun's bizarre behavior continued. As soon as we got out of the taxi, he ran to our flat ahead of me and locked me out. Now I couldn't hold my temper anymore, so shouted and swore at him, banging the door. Ah, oh, but my fucking stiff neck and achy shoulder. Soon I gave up and leaned myself against the door, rubbing sore neck and shoulder. I could hear Yongjun doing something inside. Bustling noise of a plastic bag, the sound of pouring something in a bowl? And then his footsteps approaching the door. The door burst it open suddenly. Have you lost your mind or what? I shouted, but what met my outburst was a shower of sea salt. Yongjun was throwing salt at me with such a scary face I had never seen from him. I was mad beyond words, but could not say anything facing so nonsensical situation. He threw a whole bowl full of salt at me and told me to come in as if nothing happened. When I got out of shower, Yongjun had passed out on the sofa. I thought it was no use to talk to him now and went to bed myself. I noticed I was feeling fine. The pressing headache, stiff neck and painful shoulder were all gone. I wondered, but could sleep soundly in any case. In the morning, I asked Yongjun what it was all about the previous night, thumbing my belly and neck and salt shower. Yongjun huffed and said, You had a woman hanging on your right shoulder. I was dumbfounded and couldn't understand whatever he was talking about. But slowly put two and two together. Indeed, it was my right shoulder that was painful, and after the salt shower, indeed, all the pain was gone. He had never told me till then, but apparently he had a spiritual gift and could see ghosts. His sensitivity got duller over the years, but he still could see what he wasn't supposed to see, especially when he got pissed. It all could have been just a coincidence, but having had a physical experience firsthand, now I'm inclined to think there might be something beyond what our eyes can see after all. Hi, it's Anthony here, and thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I don't think many people really take the taboo about funerals seriously in modern Korea, but many would at least take the salt ritual in the spirit of better be careful than sorry. Especially when such cautionary tales as in today's stories still float around. I wonder if such superstition exists in other countries too. Do let me know in the comment if you know any from your culture. If you enjoyed my work, please leave it a like and a comment and please consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to support more directly, I also have a Buy Me A Coffee account. The link's in the description. As always, I'm grateful for your support in whichever way. Until next Sunday, stay safe and take care.